Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Thursday, November 7th, 2019. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Keep in mind also that these readings are, in fact, meant to be timeless. So it doesn't matter when the, date, the, the reading is dated for. If you were drawn to the reading after the fact and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that time. Yes. All right, kids, let's get into it. So as I was channeling this morning, um, uh, just like connecting with the energies and all that, I saw brown again. So the energetic state that we're in right now, or at least I feel like this is more of it is it is part of the cycle. OK, it is partially cyclical in nature. It's part of the cycles that we're moving through. However, it's more of an adv adv advisory from spirit, the universe, divine, whatnot, whatever. And that's it to ground ourselves, okay? We really need to focus on grounding ourselves. There is almost a level of panic. <laughs> almost, I say. Um, it's almost as if it's like slowly creeping up on you. Just worry, doubt, fear, um, and that, that all, all that, all those good, good things. But see, it's really, it's, it's really minor right now. Um, and, and I'll get to, I'll show you in our pre-shuffle why it's so minor, but it's still enough of a potential reality for the universe to step in and be like, whoa, we need to ground ourselves guys. Okay. Let's look at what we have here. We have the four of wands with the 10 of cups. Yes, but then that's here with the Seven of Cups, and it's the side of the Seven of Cups in which we find this person who is, in fact, blind. If you can see, you see, I don't know how well you can see that, but you see how his his eyes are completely white. He, the, the individual in this, in this sense, is blind, um, and he's wandered into a marsh. He has no idea how he's gotten there, and he has no idea how to get back home, okay? That is 100% panic, <laughs> all right? or at least a situation that could definitely lead to some uh, to some panic. Overall energy though, we have the four of swords, but we also have it with the four of cups, all right? So, for some of you out there, the message that I'm getting, especially with that four of cups is, you. what I just heard is you have to leave it be. You have to let it go, okay? Something you were something was missed out on. All right. And there's no at this point there's there's no changing that. You can't you can't go back in the past and redo something. You can't. It's it, and and I'm not gonna say it's imp it's physically impossible. What I am gonna say is we don't have that technology right now, so <laughs> you can't go back. All right. You can't go back and rekindle a relationship. You can't go back and change the way you treated someone. You can't go back and change the way you reacted in a situation. You can't go back and change the way you handled the situation. All you can do right now is rest and meditate on it. Meditate on the situation. Meditate on what it meant for you, what you learned in the situation. Okay. But you have four fours here. Let me point that out. You have the Four of Swords, the Four of Cups, okay? This is dealing mostly with the past energy, all right? And that's that's basically saying to me, you're just going to have to sit and accept it. You're just going to have to sit down and come to terms with it, all right? And then you have the Four of Wands. See, here's the thing about this. So I guess this is pretty balanced. It's fairly balanced in terms of the, the what, what someone could be feeling here. Because you do have these really positive cards in the Four of Wands and the Ten of Cups. The Four of Wands is absolutely speaking to the fact that you have this spiritual foundation. You know, you have whatever it is that you've experienced in the past has absolutely led you to a very good place. A place that eventually is going to take you to that Ten of Cups. It's going to take you to that person that, that, that you know, would be your counterpart. It's going to take you to that person that's going to feel like your sanctuary. It's going to take you to that person where... When you two finally get, to, and I just saw 444 on the counter. And also, do you hear Archangel Michael to the rescue here? I'm going to give it a second and let that fade. And 
unseen. Excellent. Okay. But it's going to take you to that person, the spiritual foundation that you have come to, that you have, that you're beginning to realize is what I'm hearing. It's going to take you to that person who is your sanctuary, who is your home, who is your lover, your friend, your confidant, who is going to, who, when you two actually get together, you're going to almost feel like you've been through hell and back and now you finally found each other and now you can finally rest and, and relax and enjoy your lives and just, and you know, and be partners and whatnot, whatever. But right now you have to get through the confusion. Seven of Cups. And part of this, and, and actually part of what I'm getting with this Seven of Cups energy is I feel like somebody is freaking themselves out because they refuse, they refused to meditate. They refuse to go within. They refuse to take steps to quiet their mind. And all they're doing is sitting here focusing on what has been lost instead of what's actually been gained here through whatever loss or missed opportunity has been experienced. It may seem, it may seem like a catastrophe has happened, but in the grand scheme of things, when you zoom out, and I know this is difficult for the conscious human mind to do because we're not really, the human mind is a very powerful, powerful computer, okay? Your mind is in fact a computer. You program your mind just like you program a computer. But when you zoom out, you start to realize that actually everything happened exactly as it was supposed to. Everything happened for a reason. You may not be able to understand or comprehend what that reason is, but in the grand scheme of things, there are no mistakes, okay? There are no coincidences, Co coincidences, coincidences, yes? Everything, absolutely everything happens for a reason, okay? There is no such thing, I really don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck because we do, in fact, create our own realities, okay? Consciously and subconsciously. And I don't believe in coincidences. The universe is way too intelligent for things like coincidences to be real. Everything happens for a reason, okay? So the theme right now for the collective, we're, we're moving out of, it seems either, okay, either we're moving out of this really emotional time period where we're really focusing on our emotions or, well, yes, we're either we're doing that and we're, we're starting to ground what we are experiencing. You know, we're starting to ground and release and, and, and solidify this level that we've come to, this foundation that we've, that has recently been built that is now, we'll say, settling, uh, drying, you know. In the, in, the, in the earth um, for us to start building the rest of our house later on once that, that settling process is complete. Or, and or, I guess you should say, some of us are really starting to freak out and the universe is coming through saying, warning, 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 you need to ground yourself. <laughs> okay? All right. Let it, let, let's see what else we get here. Give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what else comes out for us. Today's skis. Ooh, oh, that's enough. Hmm. Okay. Let me take a little sip of coffee here. So, um, somebody bought a new mug, and I unfortunately I'm not using it just because. It is, it is a little too small. Like I was hoping to use it, but it was just too small. But don't worry about it, it's okay. It's okay, I really appreciate it. And the P, the, the P.O. Box situation, um, don't worry, just if you wanna send something, send something. Just make sure for now that you do me a favor and email me the tracking number if you're sending something just so that I can make sure I can keep track of it on my end and I know what I and because mainly the thing about it is um, the one thing that the post office would need in order to be able to, tr to, to figure out where you're packing it package is is the tracking number so just please for now make sure that you send the pack tracking number um, 
I feel like once things get settled later on, we won't always have to do that. But for right now, because I don't know if you guys saw, um, check the video that I went, I went live yesterday while I was dealing with the, uh, the, the post office. I went live on both Instagram and YouTube, but check, YouTube is going to be there forever. Instagram is going to, is actually going to be gone by like, I want to say 11.30 this morning, but, um, just check, check that video and you'll, you'll, if you haven't seen it yet, it's, it was frustrating, you guys. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's get moving. Okay, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday, November 7th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, kids. We're doing five shuffles today. This is three. Ooh, I'm getting distracted this morning. Pull it together, Eric. <laughs> Four. And five. Awesome. All right, let's see what we've got for today. Thursday, November 7th, 2019. Uh, 2019. Thursday, November 7th. For the collective. one more time <clears throat> and then we'll see what we've got again my eyes are closed so I don't see what's on the table yet but we're gonna do this one more Thursday November 7th best messages please spirit okay we're gonna stop there oh look it's the four of wands again ooh with death and the ace of cups okay now, but it's the side of death in which we have a representation of a rebirth, okay? Because uh, death is a cycle. Death is a, tr I'm sorry, not a cycle. Death is a transition from one state of being to the next, okay? And so once, death doesn't really exist in the way that we think of it, okay? We are all eternal beings. You don't really die. You just, you just go, I mean, you're, you're, your meat suit expires, sure, okay. And then it decomposes and, it, and it's, well, it's meant to decompose and then return back to the earth. But we have this crazy practice of embalming dead bodies so that, so that they can just go into the ground preserved. I mean, what, to just take, I don't, <laughs> anyway. Um, but your the the essence, the spirit that you are that was encapsulated within the body lives on, is eternal, all right? So when, when there is a death, there is always a rebirth in a new form. It's a transition from one state of being to the next, okay? In this situation here, I feel like this is a, this is speaking to this is speaking to why. You need to ground yourself here. Why some of us are really getting all up in our head, our egos are getting all up in the way, and it's becoming a problem. Whatever happened in the past, happened in the past, okay? You can't change it. Really, the only thing that you can do is learn from it. So instead of wallowing in pity or fighting tooth and nail against learning some sort of lesson, it's time to ground yourself and start focusing on that lesson, all right? 
ultimately what's coming through here is a sense of rebirth in the ter in terms of self-love, loving yourself, which is self-love, Eric. <laughs> But, but, but filling your own cup, finding a, a deeper sense of self-respect even, okay? And I'm, I am getting, I am reluctantly, like this, mm, 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 mm. you guys know, I, I, I started my channel doing Twin Flame readings and I am ever so reluctant to talk about it now, but, but it's still, it's still a reality. It's still something a lot of people are going through. And I channel it all the time, so whatever. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna deliver the message, and it's fine. If it resonates for you, then please, by all means, take the message, okay? Um, but I am feeling a rebirth of a certain relationship over time, eventually. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't really want the specifics on that. And to be quite honest, it's really not about the specifics. You're not meant to get caught up on the specifics of who, well, who are you talking about? And, and why is that gonna happen? And when is that gonna happen? It's like, look, don't even come at me with that shit, okay? Don't even come at me with that shit because I'm not gonna tell you. And spirit's not gonna tell you either because it's really not important, okay? Uh, but the message is coming through. The, that's what I'm feeling in the energy. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to convey it. But don't get caught up on the specifics. What you need to be doing is focusing on you. Focusing on you. Self-love. Ace of Cups. But then also, look at it. Look at Look at On this side of the Ace of Cups, you do have this creepy stalker here. <laughs> Not necessarily. But like, you straight up got some, some dude rolling up, creeping up on in the middle of the night, like on this fountain. Like, come on. <laughs> And for some of you, that could be the masculine energy. It's like, okay, fine. Um, so be in your queen of wands status, okay? Not focused on the details, but also very, very aware of what it is you want and allowing yourself to be in the receptive mode towards it. We're talking to the feminines for sure. We're for sure talking to the feminines here, all right? The feminine, you need a break. You need a freaking vacation and you need to stop all this queen of swords energy. And let me tell you, I am one of them. Okay. I'm one of them. But I understand. I understand why you've been in this queen of swords energy for so long. The queen of swords here represents defense, a defensive, me a defense mechanism, a defensive nature. All right. You're not trying to get hurt again. So for, for a good amount of time, you may still even be in this energy, but for the good, a good amount of time, you have been, you had had these extreme walls up, like literally just ready to cut anybody down to size. Just slice anyone by the, by the kneecaps. You know what I mean? Like willy nilly for any, for any old reason, maybe just cause you felt like it, they looked at you the wrong way off with their head, you know, that kind of energy. And it was a defense mechanism for a while. Okay, but now it's time to let that go. You have got to allow yourself to enter into some sort of chamber, uh, a, a rebirthing chamber, a hyperbolic chamber. You have got to allow yourself to heal, to rest, because you have come very, 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 very far. You see how the sun is shining on you there in that Four of Wands card? You have a really strong spiritual foundation. You don't need to keep fighting like this. You don't. It's really just not necessary anymore. The divine will bring you exactly what it is you are worthy of, exactly what it is you deserve. You do not have to fight so hard against some individual coming back. The, 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 the universe is going to test you, is going to test you. Have you, are you really sticking to your guns here? You, you're telling us you don't want this type of energy back in your life. So, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring this energy back into your life and we're going to see what you do with it. Are you going to accept it back into your life just because you want this person back and you're afraid of them, you're afraid of rejecting them and you're afraid of them running away again? Are you going to accept it from, are you going to accept the same energy but from a completely different person? even though you recognize the same energy and you already know you don't want that energy in your life. Are you going to throw a hissy fit? Are you going to throw a tantrum? That's not so much of a grading point 
It's more a matter of are you going to accept things into your life that you have vehemently ranted and raved to us about how you don't want that? If you do, that tells you something. But if you don't, if you recognize it for what it is and you're like, no, actually, I'm good on that. I don't want that in my life anymore. Well, there you go. There's the death and, tra the death and rebirth right there. Excellent. So if you don't want this in your life anymore, when we do bring it back to show you just, 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 for, sh just for kicks, just for shits and giggles, just to see what you do with it, simply just reject it and move on with your life. No, actually, I don't want that anymore, but thank you. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, guys. None of this, none of this extreme defensive um, Queen of Swords energy. No, you don't need to do that. It's not necessary anymore. Okay. You not, you need to give yourself a break. You need to rest. You need to ground yourselves. You need to understand that whatever it is that you've been through in this journey has only been helping you recognize what it is you don't want, so that you can clear the space for what it is you do want. And I'm not trying to, to devalue anybody's feelings here. I get it. I was in that energy for the longest time. Angry, bitter, resentful, ready to chop anybody's heads off that rubbed me the wrong way. I get it. It's a natural part of the process. But at some point, you have got to come out of that. Because at some point, you're really only hurting yourself in terms, by way of hurting others, needlessly. Okay? Especially in terms of some counterpart, twin flame, or certain individual that really hurt you. I mean, you can't shit on this person forever. I mean, you can, sure, but is it really worth it? Why would it even, why would you even want to give that energy to the situation any longer? Make sense? Okay. I want to move forward to some clarification here. Um, and since we're talking to the feminines, I want to use the wild unknown tarot <clears throat> because I've been using this for the, uh, connecting with your inner feminine reading. And I just, I just really like using it for that. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get a little cl more clarity, a little deeper understanding of these energies here for you. One last shuffle. All right, let's see what what more of these energies are for you here. Let's get a little bit of a little bit of a deeper look into this for you guys. The world, the world just popped out. Oof with the Queen of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Okay. Um, there is more that Spirit wants to say. However, we're going to use the Golden U We're going to move to the Golden Universal Tarot for that. But let's talk about this. Twofold. One, the world in terms of putting an end to this extreme defensiveness. Now, also, though, there, you're in the process of embodying the energies of the Empress. The Empress is the queen of all queens. She's the queen of wands, pentacles, cups, and swords. But she's balanced between all four of those archetypes, right? So we're not asking, we're not saying that you need to completely leave the queen of swords energy behind, but you need to get out of this extreme defensive energy. And in terms of closing out the cycles, yes, the Queen of Swords is going to be necessary. That energy is going to be necessary because she recognizes when something is not in alignment, when it is not going to serve the highest good, when it is wasting your time, when it is superfluous, and she's literally just going to cut it out. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. No arguments, no brawl, no nothing. She's just going to cut where the cuts need to be cut, and that's it. We're not even, we don't even have to talk about it. You don't even have to know about it. Just let her do her thing and defend, but don't let it get out of control, okay? 
you could kind of see the Queen of Swords as an aspect of the ego, right? Because the ego is meant to be a defense mechanism. So what's necessary here is to bring this Queen of Swords energy into balance in terms of closing out the cycle and being a whole and fuller version of yourself than you have been in the past. That is the goal here. That is the message, okay? Okay, now we're gonna move to the Golden Universal Tarot and we're gonna get Spirit's Guidance and then we're gonna do, okay, and then we're gonna move to the Oracle section. And this, and, and, and okay, let me just say this. We don't have to just be talking to the feminines here. We could be talking to those of you who are more masculine, okay? and are working on balancing your feminine energy as well because the queen of swords is at, is is at your disposal as well she she can be your ally too all right okay One last shuffle here. Okay. Spirits, take guidance that you have for us, please, Spirit. Oh, is that the Wheel of Fortune? Yep, it sure is. Wow. Okay, look, and then there's the King of Cups at the bottom of the deck here. Emotional maturity, emotional responsibility. Uh, somebody's coming in. Divine timing. Divine timing definitely has, is, is at play here. Divine timing is definitely um, a factor. Definitely a factor. Uh, you know, this is actually lining up with the Twin Flame collective readings that have been coming out lately, but with the feminine kind of separating from the situation, going on her own path, going internally, focusing on herself, um, focus, focusing on what it is that she needs to realize her dreams, focusing on what it is that she really truly desires to manifest in life and being in that receptive mode, you know, to receive that Queen of Wands and cutting out anything that stands in the way of her receiving that in a balanced manner, of course, Queen of Swords, that is allowing the cycles of karma and dharma, I'm hearing, to change, to reset. It is almost, there is... There's definitely an energy of needing to, if you're not doing this already, needing to remove yourself from this karmic hamster wheel, okay? That, in turn, leaves the masculine to his own devices. So, in essence, feminine, what you're doing is you are taking responsibility and you're saying, you know what? I'm not going to do this anymore. I am pulling, I am removing myself from this cycle because this is getting us nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. So, peace, buddy. I'm out. I'm taking responsibility. I'm owning my shit. I'm, I'm pulling up my big girl, big boy pants, and I'm saying, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm not doing this anymore. But in doing that, you need to be forgiving also of yourself and of the other person because the more you harbor malintent or um, resentment, then you're still in that karmic cycle. Okay, but you really need to take emotional responsibility, take responsibility for yourself and your actions and your, the part that you played in it and say, you know what, I'm sorry for what I've done, for my part in this, I forgive you for your part in this, I release you from this, I release myself from this, I'm removing myself from this karmic hamster wheel. That leaves the masculine to fend for himself, which is exactly what he needs because he needs to be 
with his own devices. He needs to be with his own energies to see it for what it truly is so that he can then be in the position to take it, take his power back for himself, take responsibility for himself and pull himself out of the karmic hamster wheel. But then once that closes out, that allows the two of you to come together in some way, or it allows the two of you to come together with a counterpart that's going to resonate with you. Make sense? But, and I'm going back to the feminines here, the more you stay in this Queen of Swords in reverse energy, the more you stay on this karmic hamster wheel and the longer it takes to close out this cycle. Does that make sense? Okay. There's more. I'm, 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 I'm being told that there's more. There are more messages from the Golden Universal Tarot, so I'm going to take that in it right now. What else do you want to say, Spirit? Okay. Ooh, wow. Okay, so now we have the, whoa. Now we have the King of Wands and the Two of Wands with the Hierophant. That's interesting. I feel like this is speaking to the masculine taking action. Because we do, look, we've got counterparts here. The queen to the king of wands, okay? So with the feminine, and keep in mind, guys, this has nothing to do with gender. But with the feminine here, being in her receptive energy, knowing what it is she wants, and priming the landscape for that, that's allowing the masculine to follow suit, to follow through. Make a decision. Go, and what, go with what he desires. The Hierophant energy is giving me a teaching and learning vibe in this situation. And it's, it's asking the question, what have you learned here? It also is giving me an energy of commitment, marriage, and whatnot. Which is to come. This is further on down the line. Interesting. So the um, the hierophant here, the hierophant normally it, it can speak speak to conformity and whatnot. But what I'm seeing in the hierophant is an energy of getting the counterparts in alignment in the physical, doing what it takes, doing what is necessary, going through the necessary processes, going through the necessary lessons to bring the counterparts into physical, into alignment in the physical realm, which is going to allow them to come together in the physical realm. That's really interesting. I've never seen the Hierophant that way. I really like that. But feminines, you really need to take your power back and focus on yourself. Focus on your alignment. Do not focus on the specific person. Do not focus on the specific details. Do not, do not, do not focus on the specificities unless it feels good to you. If it's only going to create more resistance, don't focus on that. Just focus on what it is that you want out of a partner, out of a relationship, out of life. And then focus on doing what you need to do to get into alignment with that. The universe will take care of the rest. That's very, very interesting, you guys. I have never seen the Hierophant that way. And it's really quite reassuring because I was so tired of seeing the Hierophant as a patriarchal <laughs> dictator. Like, no, I'm tired of that shit. <laughs> There's got to be more to that card. Excellent. All right, so we're going to move forward to our Oracle deck and today I'm feeling called to use the light worker oracle okay here we go kids let's see let's get our oracle guidance for today Here we go. Oop, there it is. Awesome. Card number 38, Earth Healing. And three and eight absolutely boils down to an 11, y'all. Boop. 
<laughs> All right. You are making a real contribution to the planet through your spiritual journey. Remember this and believe that your needs will be generously met by the earth and the universe. What you are doing matters and you will be supported. This is absolutely, especially for those of us that are on this twin flame journey. Um, and if you, if you don't resonate with the twin flame journey, like actually being on it, like in a twin flame situation or having gone through a twin flame activation, please do not worry. These messages still could apply to you, okay? The main thing, the main purpose of this twin flame journey is to aid in the ascension of the planet. It is not strictly just to end up with a certain individual. No, this is the, the twin flame journey is nothing but a means to an end. What is that end? fifth dimensional reality the raising the rising of the vibration of the planet and the individuals and beings that in, incarnate on it or inhabit it yes and that's exactly what this card is speaking to okay the earth recognizes. i want to read a little more of this the earth recognizes you she sees you as a conduit through which she is fed higher frequencies of light love and divine presence this assists her on the journey of her own evolution. Earth is an exceptionally beautiful and powerful divine being in her own right. Yet she, like every other being, benefits from the assistance of higher frequencies, which offer a loving hand to help raise her vibration and continue her evolution. You are here to have your spiritual life journey in a human body. Part of that process will inv involve sharing your light with the earth itself. This may seem this may seem, I'm sorry, this may see you take on the role of a healer, guide, mentor, or teacher to others on the path. It may see you doing work with the material, well, I'm sorry, with the natural world, with various earth-centered causes such as conservation and animal welfare, organic and biodynamic farming, and ethical food production. It may involve an active prayer life that is ongoing throughout your day praying for assistance, compassion, clearing, and blessing when you see an accident on the road, an animal or person who seems to be suffering, or an item on the news that you know needs light and healing. From the most obvious gestures to the more subtle, the oracle tells you that you are powerful enough to make a meaningful contribution to the quality of consciousness upon the earth. Earth asks you to do your work with quiet confidence and dedication. She gives thanks for all you have done and acknowledges her love for you. She will support you in your work by providing material means for you whilst you are here on this planet. These include financial support, housing, food, and human animal resource, and human and animal re relationships. She will also provide guidance for your progress, opportunities to grow and expand your field of influence, education and training opportunities, the means to take advantage of them, and the chance to apply what you have learned in a real world context. The more you devote yourself to your task of earth healing, the more the earth will support you in fulfilling your inspired goals. If you have been wondering if the spiritual work you are doing is making a contribution, take this oracle as validation that it is. What you are doing matters. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna stop right there because I just got a flash. Some of you are very, very aware of what this twin flame situation means fully. And you're starting to ask yourself if it was all even worth it. Yes. The answer is a big resounding yes, it is in fact worth it. This is having an impact, an impact on the earth, the grid, the energy grid, on everything in such subtle ways that we can't, we may not be able to perceive it right now. Or we can't perceive it right now. Our, our consciousness is too narrow, too narrowly focused in the physical. But don't take that as a detriment because it is absolutely meant to be that narrowly focused or we would not have been able to complete this, these missions that we need to complete, okay? <clears throat> what you are doing matters. Yes, you are going to expand and grow in the work you are doing and the impact that you have in the world because you are capable of that. 
but you are already helping in ways that you may not realize, but that the earth and the spiritual worlds do. You have loved the earth enough to take human form and do your work here. She knows it and she will reward you richly for it. Keep working, shining and growing, dear one. Your presence here is so needed and honored. And that goes for both masculine and feminine, okay? It's not just the feminines that are here doing the work and reaping the rewards, no. The masculines are in fact doing this too. They're doing it in their own way. Their path, their process looks very different from the feminine, but it's all going to come together. All right, guys? So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. Ha ha ha.